It's nice to see some Sonic Screen in the room. And uh, there's been some excitement in the air recently. And we are pleased today to announce that we have received a proposal to create a public-private partnership that could result in the construction of an NBA and NHL sports facility within our existing stadium district in Seattle. On first look, this is an exciting proposal, and it could mean big things for our community. What does this mean for Seattle? If we succeed, this project means hundreds of millions of dollars of private investment, an investment that will help our city recover from the longest and deepest recession since the Great Depression. The arena will be designed to incorporate the needs of the NHL, and if so, it will be the only such facility here. And, most important, it could mean that the Seattle Supersonics will play once again in our city. They were born here in 1967, a time when the NBA was really beginning to take shape, and where it performed successfully for over 40 years. And who can forget that it was the Seattle Supersonics that brought us a world championship under the leadership of Coach Lenny Wilkins. And Coach Wilkins, an NBA Hall of Famer and Seattle icon, will be part of helping move this forward. Thank you. Now, a major reason we're here today, um, and you've seen some of the newspaper reports, is because of Chris Hansen. Chris grew up here in Seattle, graduated from Roosevelt High School, and he approached us several months ago about bringing an NBA team back to Seattle. He has presented us a promising path to bring the NBA back to Seattle and introduce the NHL to our state. He was and is a major fan of the Supersonics. He grew up with them, and he can tell you the starting lineup of the 1979 World Championship team without any prompting. And I'd like to talk to you about what the process has been today. He, he asked for a meeting with, with me um, when he first um, wanted to explore this idea. And I sat down with a couple of my senior staff, and he told us of his interest in bringing a new arena, to Seattle and of bringing the Sonics back and of bringing an NHL team. He wanted to know if we were prepared to do the hard work necessary on our end if he was serious on his end. And we were. And we did have some requirements that we had to share with them. We knew that we had to get a fair return on our investment. The people of Seattle passed I-91 and they've made their, their expectations clear. We also um, wanted to ensure that the arena, therefore, if it was going to get a fair return, had to be funded through its own revenue streams, and that it would require a significant investment from the investors to make it work. Equally important was we wanted to ensure that we had the type of relationship that would be long-term and enduring, because if the Sonics are to return, we want them to stay. After I first met Chris, and I understood from him his deep commitment to the project, and that he had the wherewithal and capacity to make the project a reality, I directed my chief of staff, my director of policy and operations, to work with our city budget office to review the opportunity, and make sure that we were in a position to work collaboratively with an investment group, and that we were in a position to understand our options and make decisions if a proposal were presented to us. We knew we needed outside expertise, so we retained outside expertise uh, by hiring an expert on arena financing as well as a local expert on taxation issues to make sure that we were proceeding in a way that we understood what uh, the needs would be of us and that we were protecting the city. Today, we have received a proposal that I believe reflects the work by the city, by the county, and by Chris's team to meet the goals I set forth at our initial meeting. Let me describe the proposal. First, it is to construct, and it is a proposal, and there's more work to be done. The proposal is to construct an arena in the Soto area that would accommodate the NBA, NHL,
concerts, and other cultural events. The proposal includes a significant private investment from Chris Hansen and the investors he will bring to this uh, proposal, over $500 million to go towards the facility and the purchase of a team. The proposal includes a maximum public partition, participation of $200 million combined from the city and county. This is very important. The public investment will be repaid through rent payments and tax revenue generated directly as a result of the project. I want to be clear. This is revenue that would not otherwise exist if it were not for the arena project. The city and county will ultimately own the land and the facility. And the proposal includes a number of financial protections for the city and county. The proposal is that the team and the owners would guarantee repayment of public investments. They are proposing a binding non-relocation agreement for 30 years. They are prompt, their proposal includes a responsibility from the team and owners for all construction cost overruns, as well as ongoing maintenance, operating, and capital work on the facility for 30 years. And as an additional protection, we requested, and they agreed, to provide a security reserve, which will hold funds to be available to cover any shortfalls. The proposal further specifies that it will comply with Initiative I-91. And this was important. It was the will of the voters, and uh, I voted for it as well. So this is an important, uh, it's an important uh, statement from the voters of what their expectations are for an investment. Now, I've detailed the proposal, um, and there are more details available. The press is, uh, you know, we're available uh, to, to brief the press in, in, in further detail uh, that, of what we've received. I want to turn this over now to Dow Constantine uh, to, to talk more about next steps and, and some more details surrounding this. But I, I want to make a couple of comments. First of all, this is a full partnership between the city and county, and a full partnership is required to make this work. And over the last two years, Dow and I have uh, been able to collaborate on a number of projects. When uh, the prior executive and mayor couldn't agree on, on a jail facility, we were able to reach a long-term agreement that's saving both the county and the city millions and millions of dollars and have forged a relationship for it. We work together to help uh, the city to help with financing of a county-owned bridge that connects city neighborhoods at South Park Bridge. And we're committed to working together on other issues, and we're committed to working together on this one. Um, this is a, ultimately a regional investment that will be a benefit for the entire region. So with that, I am uh, pleased to announce Dow Constantine. Thank you, Mayor McGinn. Well, a lot of you know I was born and raised in this town, born even before the Sonics were born. And I grew up, Coach, cheering on my team, and I was right there on those streets for that celebration as a school kid in 1979. Well, my fellow fans, yes, we have a chance to do something special. Along with Mayor McGinn, I am so pleased to announce that we have this proposal to bring the NBA back to King County and to the city of Seattle. No, it's, it's not game seven. This is, this is the tip off of the first game of the preseason. This is, this is a set of principles, it's a start. But after so long without any real good options, it's just great to have a chance to get back on the court. And this proposal could be special. It represents the first real path we've been able to see to bring back our beloved Sonics and to attract a whole new league, the NHL, for hockey fans of the Northwest. Now, Mayor McGinn mentioned the 1979 championship, but many of you will remember that was not Seattle's first professional sports championship. No, that came in 1917 when the Seattle Metropolitan's Hockey Club became the first American team to win the Stanley Cup. So thanks to you Metropolitan fans for being here. <laughs> for this proposal we've received, 
is worthy of serious consideration. If this agreement comes to fruition, it would become one of the top three arenas in the NBA in terms of private investment. For any arena agreement, the mayor and I have outlined several principles that must be met. He's touched on a few of those, but I want to go through the full list and tell you what we've required. And I want to tell you that on first read, this proposal appears to meet those principles. The project does not rely on new taxes. It would be self-funding. Existing city and county services would not be adversely impacted. Private investors would bear the project risk. Private investors would be responsible for any cost overruns. Public participation would be limited to issuing bonds to finance the facility. The public debt would be backed only by the taxes generated by this new facility and by rents paid by the team's owners. In any given year, shortfalls would as well be covered by the teams. So in practical terms, no public subsidy. And private investors, and this is remarkable, would put in nearly $300 million of private money into a facility and land that ultimately would be owned by the public. It appears that Chris Hansen's proposal meets the requirements we set. But we need to be sure. So today, the mayor and I are appointing an arena review panel to take a closer look at this proposal. We've asked a number of citizens to join in this group. First, the co-chairs. We've asked Jan Drago, former Seattle and King County Council member. Maude Dedon, former chair of the Metropolitan Seattle Chamber of Commerce and head of a financial firm, Seattle Northwest Securities. And the aforementioned coach and player coach, Lenny Wilkins. Other members represent the diversity of our community and the expertise we need to take a hard look at this proposal. David Freibuth, who's the executive secretary of the Martin Luther King County Labor Council. Doris Koo, the former president and CEO of Enterprise Community Partners. Karen Lee, the CEO of Pioneer Human Services. Estella Ortega, the executive director of El Centro de la Raza. Greg Smith, founder and CEO of Urban Visions. Anthony Miles, partner in the Seattle law firm of Stoll Reeves, LLP. And Jill Wakefield, the chancellor of the Seattle Community Colleges. We chose these leaders for their broad experience, expertise, and commitment to evaluate all of this proposal, every aspect. We expect them to give a frank and honest appraisal and to let us know if they think this is something that makes sense for our community to pursue. If it pencils out, construction of this arena would create thousands of good paying construction jobs, the kinds of jobs we've been fighting for, fighting to create, to get us out of this recession. And games played by a new NBA team would bring visitors who spend dollars, thousands of dollars, to boost our regional economy on hotels and restaurants, not just in Seattle, but on the east side, in SeaTac, in Federal Way, on outdoor recreation businesses and wineries in Woodenville. Between this arena and the expansion of the State Convention Center, for which I've been fighting, we could create $1.3 billion in new construction activity and thousands upon thousands of jobs for construction workers who have been so hard hit by this recession. Those salaries help not only the families of those construction workers, but they circulate over and over in this economy, helping to accelerate our recovery from recession and put us back on the road to prosperity. You know, as a local kid, I can tell you those were heady days for our region when the Sonics won the 1979 NBA title. A pretty good finish to a decade that didn't start so well with the cancellation of that other Sonic, the SST, the supersonic transport, and the signs advising us to turn out the lights as we left town. 
So yes, I'm very interested in bringing the NBA back to Seattle, to King County, to Washington State. We've been handed an offer worth looking at. It's important to understand that a proposal like this would not have been possible without the environment of partnership we've fostered here in King County. The mayor alluded to it, the projects we've been working on together. I think we've disagreed quite publicly on some of the issues that have come up over the last several years. But we have not allowed those disagreements to bleed over into all the other work that we do. And here is a project on which the city and county and this entire community can work together. So I thank the county staff, particularly my chief of staff, Sung Yang, who has spent many, many hours working to get us to this day. I thank the mayor and the city staff for their efforts on this, and I thank Chris Hansen for coming forward and look forward to the steps to come. Mayor McGinn. Thank you. So since Dow called out a staff member, um, I don't know if they're here. Paul Walker, Deputy Budget Director, Ethan Raup, Director, De Director of Operations and Policy, Julie McCoy, my Chief of Staff, um, have been hard at work on this a long time. And uh, thank you for your hard work. Yeah. And I also want to thank um, legislator uh, from a uh, senator. Yes, Senator David Frock from the 46th District, who's come down and uh, come up from Olympia, drove up to join us today. He's been working hard on this. Joined by Council Member Bruce Harrell. I thought I saw Council Member O'Brien here. Um, Council Member Gossett, Larry Gossett, has joined us, and he's a member of the committee as well. Um, so thank you all for, for coming out and showing support. So with that, questions? Mr. Mr. Mayor, Mayor can you address those folks who don't want to see any public money go to a sports arena supporting a private sports team? The first question we asked. And I think that's, that is the, the standard we set when we first met with Chris Hansen. You know, that it's, you know, we have, uh, we all know the budget situations we face. We can, we're not going to be committing new taxes, nor are we going to be digging into our general fund to pay for this. This project will be paid for by rent on the facility, by the significant private investment that's coming for, forward, and by uh, the taxes that we would not receive but for the construction of that facility. So we are not putting public dollars into this. Mr. Mayor, can you break down the public investment, the, the millions of dollars, how it would break down into the categories that you've already mentioned? So we put a cap at the city, of uh, city and county combined of $200 million. That $200 million will be repaid by rent, and it will be repaid by the uh, revenues, the tax revenues directly generated by the facility. And we built in other protections, other security, as detailed by, by Dow Constantine. You know, what percentage is rent and what percentage is revenue? I, I, I couldn't give you that number standing right now. Today, we're happy to give you, you know, connect you and give you more information about that. What is the timetable going there? forward with the arena review panel and the next steps after that? We would like to move uh, quickly, deliberately, but also carefully. And we're going to be asking this group, and I'm sorry we haven't had a chance to give you your deadlines yet, uh, <laughs> to be able to report back to us, give their initial report back uh, within a month from now, uh, helping us understand what the strengths and potential weaknesses are of this uh, proposal so that we can take those on. Mr. Mayor, can you the address the two concerns? Uh, one, uh, the cons just the we'll issues back. around industry and SOTO and, and how you, you know, how you dis what, what the discussions with industry have been like, and also um, construction of uh, the new Alaska Way Tunnel, how is that going to impact the traffic concerns? I don't see anything about that. Yeah, so the two questions raised are questions about um, traffic impacts and how that might affect adjoining uses, including the industrial and port uses. Um, those are things that we're going to have to look at moving forward. Um, we are investing making significant investments and improvements to get port from the freight to I-5, uh, significant investments to move people around, um, significant new investments in transit in that, in that area, um, and the stadium itself. Uh, one of the reasons why this arena site is so valuable is because it's located on transit as well. So 
those are important issues, and those are issues we will be working to address as we move forward. And are you, I'm sorry, are you looking at that specifically in the context of the tunnel construction? That, that, of course, tunnel construction, that's one of the things that's on the ground. So, of course, that, that would be incorporated into the analysis. And let me, uh, Erica, if I could continue to respond to that. Uh, King County Metro is in the process of implementing our bus rapid transit line in this corridor. Uh, it's going to go West Seattle downtown Ballard. That's going to be able to carry a lot more people uh, more efficiently through this corridor as construction continues. Ultimately, Highway 99 and the railroad tracks will have an overpass to get yeah. freight directly from our seaport uh, to the rail yards and uh, the First Avenue corridor, which is going to dramatically improve freight movements within the Soto area. Has the NBA seen these proposals, and what is your contact? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, I, can, I think I can handle that. The question was about, has the NBA or NHL seen these proposals? Our job at this site, you know, the job of Dow and, and I, is to make sure we're in a position to respond to um, this proposal from Chris Hansen around an arena. It's, it's his job to uh, work with the NBA and NHL, around, you know, working out the arrangements with them. That's on his side of the equation. Why is Mr. Hansen not here, sir? You know, he, he was here. He was here yesterday, uh, meeting with uh, me, meeting with council members. His, he's uh, meeting with the Seattle Times. Um, he has been here. Um, his staff has been here. There's been a lot of diligent work behind the scenes. Um, he's made his proposal. And it's now, that proposal is now in our hands. It's, it's our turn now that he's given us this proposal. What has he told you about the interest from the NBA? I mean, are they looking at Sacramento? What, what has he given you on that side? You know, we, I don't inquire about that, again, because that's his, that's his side of the equation. My concern, it's one of the reasons we hired a, an arena expert as well. My understanding is that there are pathways to obtaining a team. And he's obviously not going to be committing uh, the time and effort he's been committing so far and the potential dollars unless he feels his prospects are good. But again, that's his job, and that's not our job. Our job is to make sure we're in a position to respond and provide an answer uh, to the proposal that he's presented to us as well as our job is to understand what our options were and, and what was important to the city and the county in terms of having a deal that, that protected our, our interests. Mr. Mayor, would you be surprised at this point? Because this sounds like a hell of a deal for everybody in this room. It sounds like a hell of a deal for you. It sounds like a hell of a deal for the basketball fans. And it feels like on the surface that's a no-brainer. Would you be surprised if this did not happen? And you look at the roadblocks in front of you, you kind of forecast a year, two years ago. You know, I, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take that one down. You can jump in, too. I'm out of the prediction business, okay? Just for the record, I am out of the prediction business. I'm not going into the prediction business on this one, either. You know, the, the phrase I use is it takes a lot of, a lot of planets have to align for this to work, right? And, and Dow made the comment about this is the tip-off, not the fourth quarter. We are, this is, we are at a stage in the process here, and this is a, a, a strong proposal, a promising proposal, and we put a lot of work to get to here, but other things have to align too, and you know, you gotta, you know, all the planets have to align, and we're going to work hard to push all the planets into place, but I'm not going to make any predictions. And, I, and just to be clear, he's clearly not going to put his money in until he's secured the tenant he needs for his building, and we're not going to put our money in until his money's in. So uh, there's a lot of security built into this. The governments here, city and county, are not doing anything speculating on the possibility of getting a team. If we're participating, it's because there is a team secured. And this, this, is the this team should be called the Sonics. Uh, you know, you're, I, I love, you're getting way ahead of the story here. <laughs> yes. Joni? Yes. I have a question back. Absolutely. Absolutely it should be named the Sonics. Now, let's go to Johnny, okay, and then we'll so come around again. Is, do you have, did your arena expert, or do you have any reliable economic studies that show the investments, as this community has made a couple of times, in football and baseball actually benefit the community? This is a, this is a deal that, we're exa that, that is, you know, the way this is financed is different. And we're examining this deal and its financing. And that's, what the, that's why we've also asked the expert review panel to so step forward. The other studies did, did or didn't show that, the, that those were an economic benefit. To no, we, we, are, we, are, we have been analyzing this, this deal. What, what, what are the projected you know, tax revenues that were here? What would be our requirements for rent? Um, and, he, and of course, the investor who's putting in 
potential, as, you, as we've said, hundreds of millions of dollars, is doing his own analysis of what's going to work. And we're analyzing this deal. Mr. Constantine, you said it was not speculation. So what makes the two of you think you could get a basketball team and a hockey team? What I said was he's not going to put his money in if he doesn't secure a team, and we're not going to put uh, our money in unless he has put his money in and secured a team. So, so there will be no there there will be no arena unless there's an agreement to get a team here and to occupy that arena over a very long term. Uh, the entire deal depends on it. And you know, to answer your to answer your question, that's the job of of Chris Hansen and his group to obtain teams. And we, we, I can't tell you today what will happen there. But clearly the city has spent money on consultants and put a lot of effort in. So what makes you think that you can get a team, that he can get a team? Um, we, you know, again, but the fact that he's willing to put money in and do this work, and, you know, he's had conversations with the NBA, obviously. Um, and, you know, our own advice from our own arena expert leads us to believe that he does have a pathway to getting one sufficient to look at it. And again, we're talking about hundreds of millions of investment, thousands of jobs, opportunity to bring back the Sonics. We do have to, we, we have to be in a position where we did the work to understand what the options were. Just like anybody who comes to town and talks about putting in hundreds of millions of dollars to invest in this city, we take that seriously. Mayor, have you we, we've, we've talked, talked, about, about, we talked about the money, but what about the size? Can you talk about the scope of the land involved here? Will you have to take out Occidental? We, we know about the one parcel, but then there's the other side on First Avenue. Yeah, um, I don't have an answer to that question. We'll, we'll, we'll be waiting to see more detailed um, designs, of course, and, and what they're looking at there. You know, I will say this, um, speaking about the process and the proposal, it is important that um, if the investor group is going to be approaching the NBA and NHL to obtain, you know, some type of agreement on, on a team in Seattle, um, the NBA and the NHL will need to know what's the level of our commitment here. So that's, this is why we're at a stage in the process here of examining whether there's a, a, a feasible proposal to build an arena. If there is a feasible proposal, if that's where we end up, and again, it's a very promising proposal, if that's where we end up and we are able to make that, that next step in the commitment, we can continue down this pathway. But there's multiple steps along the way. This is a journey we're taking here. And uh, this is a, a very important part of the journey, to receive this proposal, to have done the work. But there's a lot more steps to go. What do you want to see in terms of the long-term feasibility for Key Arena, that city-owned entity there, yeah. and that, Seattle Center going forward? Yeah. So, um, you know, we, we went to work, I, I'm smiling a little bit, because when I, when I took office, um, there was a, a proposal regarding a potential Shahuli Museum. And we opened up and took multiple bids, and, and we have ultimately have a Shahuli Museum going in, KEXP uh, going into another part, an investment in a children's playground in another part. So Seattle Center is in a continual process of reinventing itself. Now, the loss of the Sonics was a big blow to Key Arena, obviously. And, you know, one silver lining out of that, uh, I don't even know I should use that phrase, one, one outcome of that was that the bonds on Key Arena were paid off. So the on, you know, so how much money do you have to make from ongoing events at Key Arena was a lot lower than it had been before. And the Seattle Center, under the leadership of Robert Nellums, has been working really hard to bring in events but Key Arena just isn't competitive with other major arenas right now, just regionally, to draw some of those events. It's occupying a different competitive niche. And as we get a, if, if we get a new arena, you know, Key Arena is going to continue. We're still going to have to be creative and inventive about how to fill that, that niche for Key Arena um, in a way that makes sense. And one of the parts of the proposal is that Chris Hansen is um, um, investing dollars to help us study what we can do at Key Arena. But Key Arena has been in a process of evolution anyway, and it is in a difficult competitive situation, regardless of this new arena. So this is an opportunity for us to continue rethinking how we uh, vitalize the center. And I can't talk about the center without saying it's the 50th anniversary, and there's tons of great stuff going on down there. You can get an app on your phone that has it all listed. You can see great stuff down there. It's still a hopping, vibrant, exciting place. Key Arena is part of that. And we're just going to have to keep working to, to reinvent Key Arena um, 
after the fact that it's just not a, a basketball arena the way it was, except of course, and I'm so glad I finally got a chance to talk about the, the storm and how exciting they are and the world championship they've brought, and I've made those playoff games too. So we do have a great team down there right now. I know the, proposal calls, the proposal calls for these two teams once secured to play there at Key Arena for up to two seasons during construction. If Key Arena could barely accommodate the Sonics when they were here, can Key Arena accommodate an NHL and an NBA team for up to two seasons while the facility is being constructed? As, as an interim facility, yes. Even the NHL? Um, <coughs> NHL? Yes, it can. I got everybody, everybody nodded yes. There wasn't any division on that one. I had all yeses across the board from, the, from my uh, expert team here. Yeah. Have, have you heard that from the league, from the NHL and the NBA? Have they specifically told you that Key Arena would work as a temporary facility? Is that where you're getting that from? Uh, I'm not talking to the NBA or NHL. That's on the investor side. Our analysis is that it can support that. So thank you very much. Uh, we have a lot of work to do, and we're going to get back to it. Uh, but this is a great and optimistic day for our town and our county. I thank you for being here. Thank you, everybody.